Hey, before we get into it, Melbourne is coming up in a couple of weeks. I've got 12 shows, but I don't have that many tickets. LouSpears.com, Melbourne on the 9th of April to the 21st, every night except for Monday. Uh, then we go to Albury, Sydney, Newcastle, Port Macquarie, Gold Coast, Hope, Gold Coast, Hobart, Launceston, Adelaide, Ballarat, Warrnambool, Shepparton, and Brisbane announced soon. Get your tickets, loosebeers.com. They're going quick, especially Sydney, especially Adelaide. Uh, and those Fridays and Saturdays in Melbourne, they're filling up quick. Get your tickets. I'll see you there. It kicks off in a couple of weeks. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to episode three, two, nine of the Spearhead Sundays podcast. Well done. We, that's it. That's the last time I can do that for, fuck, I don't know. When's, it, when's the next time I can do that? That would be... 90 episodes. <laughs> 90, you've done the math? That's how much you loved it? Yeah, it'd be about 90 episodes <laughs> until, we get to, until we get to 430 something. As we go oh, four, four, three. Yeah, 100 But then, even then, no, I don't think so because it really it really only works with three, two. That sucks. And then, that, so that'll never happen again. Uh, unless... No, no, 16 episodes. Three, four, five. <laughs> That's... Well, we can do it once. <laughs> <laughs> we can do it once and that'll be really funny. Okay, so yeah, in about 30-something episodes, it'll be funny once. <laughs> uh, but until then, guys, that was a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Uh, or what if, we, unless we do 1,000 episodes more, am I even going to live? I'll live that. Will I live that long? If I do one a week? How many episodes? If I live, if I do this podcast till I'm 75... Right, average life expectancy. I'm 30 now. So what have we got? We've got uh, 45 years. You've got 2,340 episodes left. Oh, <laughs> and I'm not going to miss a single one. That's good. Gee, that'd be really great. I would love, I would love to, like in my will, right, if I have, if I have a degenerative brain disease, if I've got dementia, <laughs> oh. just fucking put me in the chair and turn the camera on for 55 minutes. And just and just go, all right, Grandpa, you're doing a podcast, and just post it. That's what I want. That's what I want my leg. See, that's what um, I really don't like seeing Bruce Willis, his daughters posting him. Let him let him die, how I envisioned him as as like an action hero, not a guy going my toes are cold. What day is it? They're raising awareness. All right, cool, whatever. I'm being selfish. I want to rem remember Bruce Willis as cool, not half retarded. You know what I mean? Half retarded. Uh, anyway, guys, welcome to the show. <laughs> um, uh, I look. Keelan's back. Hello. I, I shaved. All right. Yeah. I shaved. I decided. I looked in the mirror one day and I decided. I think that the only reason. I ever really had facial hair was because I did not have a chin, right? I think that's why. I think that's that's the reason why most people have beards. There are some dudes out there that have a jawline and a beard and they look fucking awesome. Most dudes out there are disguising a lack of a chin with a beard and they're creating a jawline. In fact, I remember this is what my surgeon said to me. When I first went in there just to see if I was a candidate for surgery, he goes, look, you've got this symptom, you've got that symptom, you've got this, you've got a really narrow palate, you look like you have a recessed jaw, so you're a pretty good candidate uh, for this surgery. And do you know what a lot of people with recessed jaws have? And I went, uh, sleep apnea? And he went, uh, nah, a beard, because you've got no chin. I was like, okay, cool, thanks, man. <laughs> and, he, and, he, and he goes, most people come into my clinic with a beard, or their best attempt at one. And uh, a lot of people leave and they don't ever have a beard again. And uh, I thought about that and I had a look in the mirror and I thought a lot of people are telling me that I don't look very different since the surgery. And I think it's because I actually trimmed my beard a lot closer, but it just looked like how I used to look when I gave the impression of a chin with facial hair. So I thought, well, logic dictates that if I shaved the beard, I would look a lot better. So I did. And uh, another reason why I shaved as well is I, I got my first, oh, you look like since the surgery from a stranger. Okay. Because I feel like people who know me, they, they know that I look like me and it was hard to tell the difference. Um, 
and I kept thinking like, man, who do I look like? And I got one. We had a guy over to the house. He'd never seen me before. And he clocks me immediately. This is when I got the beard. And he goes, oh, you look like Gary Oldman. <laughs> and I was very unhappy with that. <laughs> you know, that's uh, Commissioner Gordon in the, in the Christian Bale Batman. Right? He goes, you look like Gary Oldman. And I went, young Gary Oldman? He goes, no, no, like Commissioner Gordon. I went, fuck. He's like 40 there. So then I thought, okay, well, I'm going to get rid of the beard. And then we'll see who people really think that I look like. Uh, and what I did, shaved the beard, got rid of it. This is what I look like now. And I'm going to keep it like this. And then I posted a photo of myself. And on... Now, normally I would discredit this because sometimes someone says something crazy and people think it's funny and then everyone starts saying it and it's like a joke, like a meme. And, and you go, hey, that's a funny one. However, unfortunately, this same comparison was made across every single social media platform by multiple people. And it's upset me quite a bit. And that is a lot of people, as soon as I posted a photo of myself with no beard, they said that I look like Jeffrey Epstein. <laughs> oh, what? And I just looked at a photo of Jeffrey Epstein and I kind of see it. And I'm very upset. <laughs> what do you think? Yeah, I see it. I see it. Fuck! Great. I went in to the doctors to, to cure my sleep apnea and look more handsome. I, I come out looking like a billionaire pedophile. He's handsome, though. He is good looking. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's... Look... Take out all of the horrible stuff that he's done and disregard the fact that his soul is rightfully burning in the fiery pits of hell. Epstein was a good-looking fella. I don't know why he resorted to all of that. He could have just picked up at a bar where only of-age people were allowed. But, you know, sometimes you've got to manipulate people for your government's benefit. Or so the conspiracy theories go. I got two, the only ones that I got more than once on different social media platforms, the, the first one and by far the most common one was, you look like Jeffrey Epstein now, which sucks. Where's my Elaine? Um, the other one was, you look like Austin Butler. That's good. That's good. And I don't agree, but I'll, I'll take it. So what, what you're saying is I look like a billionaire pedophile or a guy who acts as a millionaire pedophile. Elvis. Great. At least I've got money. Sorry, scratch that. At, <laughs> the surgery has been tough financially. At least I look like I've got money. <laughs> Patreon, oh, man. Patreon, 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 Patreon. That's good. Maybe instead of <laughs> maybe instead of promoting it, we'll just try and we'll try and like brainwash people like with, with sublim subliminal messages. Patreon, Patreon. That's really good. Can you flash that up on the screen? Patreon, Patreon. <laughs> um, right. So, oh, how's this? I get my. I just checked my calendar. I get my braces off in two weeks. Two weeks. I can't fucking wait. I'm so sick of these. I can't wait to bite into an apple and eat pussy. Those are the two things that I've been missing out on. You can't eat pussy? I can't do it well. I have to be really careful and it's and it's like I'm you know what I'm doing an impression of eating pussy. <laughs> it's like it can be done, but is anyone having any fun? Not really. <laughs> you know? That's the that's the benefit of um getting braces when you're a teenager is no one's really eating pussy when you're fifteen. You know? It's more so it's more so uh, finger a girl in a park and then let your mates sniff your fingers. Did your, did your friends all do that? Yeah. Unfortunately, that is such a thing. <laughs> like I, I have such, I have so many distinct m memories of like multiple people at multiple parties just sneaking off into an alley to, to like with a girl and then coming back, boys, sniff my fingers. And we all would. And that's... That's probably, is that an Australian thing? L listeners outside of Australia, did, did that happen everywhere else? Or, or is that just like a 15, 16 year old boy thing? That's foul, isn't it? Mm. Would you imagine if that happened today? <laughs> you know? Although that's, that's a little bit of a, isn't that, isn't that kind of like a wedding tradition? I want to say Jewish or um, Indian where uh, people, 
uh, you do the marriage and then you go into a room to have sex and then you come out and you go, hey, I think it's Jewish. You come out and you go, hey, and everyone claps. Like, hey, he fucked her. woo I feel like it's a Jewish thing or maybe it's an Indian thing also. Um, but yeah. Do, girls, does that happen with you? You know? Did, did, did that happen in house parties with you where you would, you would, you would go like at... When, Jewish thing. Yeah. Jewish thing. Nailed it. Um, is, did that ever happen at house parties where you would, you would sneak around and you'd give a guy a hand job and you'd be like, oh, girls, <laughs> shake my hand. It's sticky. Girls go, smell my breath. Yuck. That's <laughs> foul. All right. And we're moving on. <laughs> That's fucking disgusting. But for real, is there a female equivalent of that? A lady equivalent? I don't think so. I hope not. There probably is. There definitely is. That's whatever you guys are yapping about in the group chat. That's what it is. See, that's a thing that girls do that that uh, at least none of my male friends have ever done is the girls will do the play-by-play -play recap of sexual encounters, like in detail. Mm. They'll do that. Like so often I was uh, like, uh, I remember so often I would uh, be with a girl um, and then her girlfriends would just know everything and it would be brought. Did that ever happen to you? No, <clears throat> no, you're not working hard enough. Uh <laughs> <laughs> but I remember hearing at 16 when I was living in America, my, um, my friend was telling me the first time he ate pussy, he, he like calls me. He's like, Oh, um, it smelled like cat food. Tastes like cat food. Is that normal? That's not normal. Yeah. That I that's not I good. And yeah. I said, I said, sorry, man, that's not normal. But I was 16, so I wouldn't have known what to say. So, yeah, you, so you didn't, but did you know, you wouldn't have known if yeah. you were 16? Yeah. I uh, see. I was an active fella. I wasn't. I was like, not till 18. I was a late bloomer. It was the lack of chin. <laughs> um, okay, so yeah. You know what? Please, for the love of God, give me another lookalike. Who else? <laughs> Who else do I look like that? That is not a pedophile. <laughs> That'd be good. So I could at least go, oh, I think they don't even have to be hot. They just have to not be a sex offender. That'd be good, you know? Um, all right. So huge news in Australia. Huge news for Tasmania. Huge news for Greeley. All right. Tasmania has finally gotten their own AFL team. The Tasmania Devils. I don't know why they didn't go with the Tasmanian Devils, but apparently there was a big copyright, like almost dispute between who owns the ta the Tasmanian Devil character. Warner Brothers. It's not Disney. No, nah, it's Warner Brothers. Warner Brothers owns Looney Tunes. Yeah. Geez, they Warner Brothers fumbled the bag. I feel like they could have been Disney, Bugs Bunny, all those characters. What's the real difference between like Bugs Bunny and fucking Michael Mouse? Yeah. Is that a character? <laughs> Fuck you. Pull. That's it. Fuck you. <laughs> Fuck you pull some strange references out. Who's Michael Mouse? Is that the mouse with the cape? <laughs> Wait, maybe I'm, maybe I'm misremembering. Michael Mouse. I Michael Mouse was like an alternative to Mickey. Really? I don't know about that. Um, I think you're hallucinating. Um, Evil Mickey, Australian Mickey Mouse. Australian Mickey Mouse. That's what it says, yeah. Right. Okay. Well, that's um, that's shouldn't have been brought up. Um, I feel like yeah, they could. That's just Mickey Mouse with angry eyebrows. Sorry. Sorry. That's just a fucking. That's I know what that is. That just looks like a shit Facebook meme page. Just made it. <laughs> this is Michael Mouse. He's Australian. Good eye, mate. Let's fucking smoke a bong. Sniff my fingers. <laughs> Um, anyway, <laughs> Tasmania has finally got their own football team. I assume they just got connected to the internet and they found out about, about the sport and they were like, why don't we have a team? Isn't that weird that Gold Coast got its team before Tasmania did? The whole fucking state? They're the only state that doesn't have a team. Every other state has like 50 teams. But they finally got one and they've, they've decided to call it the Tasmania Devils because... 
there's an animal called the Tasmania Devils. And apparently they got into a giant dispute with Warner Brothers copyright and legal team because Warner Brothers was like, hey, you can't call your team that because we own the character, the Tassie Devil, right? And uh, the guy that was going back and forth with them on the AFL team had to explain to this American lawyer that the Tasmanian Devil was an actual animal and not an invented character that Warner Brothers created. And then as soon as they found out that they did some research, probably a Google search, they were like, oh, fuck, you're totally right. And you can't copyright an animal because they are a fucking animal. It's like copywriting a human. Um, Actually, you can't have that little girl because uh, I actually copyrighted humans. <laughs> how the fuck did they... That makes me wonder, how did they even come up with the Tasmanian Devil character then? Like, was it a fate before? Because they're, they're extinct now, the Tassie Devils. De no, 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 they're not. Are the Taz well, that is even more confusing to me. I know that. I just... How do you fucking create a character about an animal and not know the animal still exists? That was so dumb that I just assumed that the Tassie Devils were extinct when I know that they're not. It's the Tassie Tigers that are gone. Who created the Tasmanian Devil? God. Evolution's fake. It was 1954, so they probably did know about them, and then it just the Tasmanian Devil character became more popular, <laughs> right? Than the actual. Yeah, that's wild. You know, if you look at the Tas the Tasmanian Devil character, that it does speak like the devils do. Because we saw when we went to the zoo thing in Tassie, we, we saw them, and they just kind of go. Ah! <laughs> they actually do that to each other, and they're always fighting, but they don't, they're so blind, they don't really have the capacity to hurt each other. So they just kind of go, Blah! you know, it's like, uh, have you ever seen a, have you ever seen that documentary about, it's really sad that, um, I think it was, it was, I can't remember what country it was. It was some Eastern European country. Uh, it was like, uh, it was a documentary, a uh, group of film documentary filmmakers went into like uh, a home for special needs people. Um, and it was really sad because they just kind of put them in a room and they didn't communicate with them and they all had their own language and they would fight over food. It reminded me of that because every now and then someone would put a bowl of food out and the Tassie Devils would be like, Wah! and fight over it. No one would get hurt, but only one person would get fed. It reminded me of that documentary. Very sad. <laughs> it's <laughs> You'll know the one, it's the one where... <laughs> it's probably maybe, maybe the most fucked joke I've made on the show. There'll be more. Um, it's the scene where... <laughs> It's actually a fucking, it's actually a horrific and heartbreaking documentary because every kid in there pretty much is actually uh, mentally disabled, but there's one kid who's just blind and they just chucked him in there and no one spoke to him or communicated with him and he just kind of became like <laughs> mentally disabled because he was just not stimulated at all. And the documentary lady just like breaks character. She's not really supposed to be on screen and she gives this kid a hug and he's like, what the fuck? is a hug he's clearly never been like touched or loved or anything like that and he's just like shit i'm just trying not to bump into things and get hit by the other kids it's fucking awful um anyway brought the mood down shall we bring it back up this afl team right you had an idea keelan yep so i've signed uh the podcast up to a founding membership ten dollars <laughs> And the that's are. how that's how shit this AFL team like that's how that's how shit they know the team's gonna be is the founding membership's ten bucks. Please join the Tasmania Devils AFL team. Do they even have a fucking AFL playing ground in Tassie? They don't have a training center and I don't think they have a home ground yet. I don't believe. So what do they have? They've got a they've got a an idea. They have an idea and they have a name and they have a they, what they're going to have is a really really difficult time coming up with a with a mascot and a logo yeah. that looks nothing like the Tasmanian Devil that Warner Bros owns because if it looks anything like that they could get sued. So the so it's going to have to just be like a photo of the actual animal. Everyone else gets a mascot the Tasmanian Devils will just be like a a photo they got off Getty Images. With the watermark. The benefits are you get a membership, so like a discount code to merch. Great. Okay. And by the way, I don't like football at all, AFL. A digital it's, membership. A digital membership to, to what? Nothing. Oh, so we don't even get a card. The first game won't be until 2028. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I'll be 34. Hopefully not living in this country. 
and I'll get a shot at getting tickets? Do I get do I get like first chance first dibs at tickets to watch my the brand new team lose? I don't know, but I hope I hope that you and I can go to the first game together. Yeah, if yeah, if we can get tickets, uh, that that'll be my promise to you. If you're still alive, because we we know your, how your how your health is. <laughs> um, if uh, if you're still alive, I'll fly here from wherever I'll fly to the game wherever it is. We'll go together cool. and and we'll hold hands and cry as they lose. Uh, Okay, so that's then you also get uh, what? What is it? A sticker? Okay, what's the sticker look like? I don't know. <laughs> they don't know yet. Well, I don't know. I didn't look into it. Ah, oh, okay, all right. And this is the most important one. This is a celebration for all of us. Yeah. Spearhead Sundays will be permanently on the training center forever. The word Spearhead Sundays will be under the list of founding members. <laughs> that's so good. What? Okay, so but there's no training center. <laughs> it's just a promise they've made right so so if they get a training center somewhere in that training center will be the word spearhead sundays yes and keelan brown keelan ferrari yeah keelan ferrari i'm getting everyone like uncle whitey signed up i've got i'm trying to get everyone i can to sign up <laughs> that's good should we get one for jeffrey epstein <laughs> yeah my Great. dad signed up okay that's so funny Right. Well, that's good. I think that's I think that's really good. We're gonna we're gonna have we're gonna be a permanent fixture in what will undoubtedly be the worst AFL team for decades to come. I've got an idea for some good guerrilla marketing. And I think I think that's that, before we get into our marketing plan. I think that is really that's the only AFL team that I want to support, and that's the that's the only AFL team that I would truly relate to is a team that just consistently loses and has the least supporters. Yeah, because that 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 That's really awesome. says a lot about m like my um, thoughts towards AFL, the sport. You know, is if I could get the only team I support is a team that most people don't won't even turn up to the games. Like, really, what I want to see is on that first game that you and I go to in 2028 <laughs> when I'm 34. I'll have to get a babysitter. You'll be in a wheelchair. <laughs> um, wh what I really want to see is halfway through the game, half the people in the Tasmania Devils seating section just leaving <laughs> to skip the traffic because like we're losing that badly they don't even want to see how it ends there's not even like second quarter i want a quarter of the audience gone like oh we know how this is going to go well the first game that the gold coast suns ever played yeah from memory it was uh, against the bombers and they lost by like 106 points <laughs> <laughs> That's that'd be good. Or, I would love for them to lose. I would love them to lose by even more, like 120 points, and then as, and then they have to get off on a plane back to Tasmania <laughs> and train in the cold and walk past Spearhead Sundays, and then and just knowing that one of their founding members is crying, laughing on the podcast <laughs> at how terribly his team did. Yeah. So I think we do a weekly update on how the how the Tassie Devils are going. Yep. But my marketing idea, guerrilla mm -hmm. marketing. Everyone listening to this, yeah. you've got ten dollars. Yeah. Sign up and put huh. your name down as Spearhead Sunday. <laughs> that's really good. Yeah, that'd be really good if it was like Spearhead Sundays, Tom Brown, Spearhead Sundays, L L Marie, Spearhead Sundays. That'd be good if we get so many people signing up under the name Spearhead Sundays that it just becomes a pattern on the wall. Yeah. That's really good. And there's, there's something like eighty thousand people already signed up. So it would kind of blend in with all the other names. But if mm. you really look, like the people painting the names on the wall, you'd yeah. be like, I've already printed this name a hundred times. I wonder then if if we should maybe encourage a little bit of variety. Do you know what I mean? Like if, we, if there's a hundred people that sign up under the name Spearhead Sundays, will they just write it once? Mm. Maybe, maybe we should do a few variations of Lewis Spears. I don't know. Uh, Lewis Spears, Spearhead Sundays. Spearhead Mondays, Spearhead Tuesdays. <laughs> Spearhead yeah, that's Wednesdays. good. Yeah, Spearhead Sundays. Yeah. Um, Spearhead Fun Days. Spears on stage. Uh, uh, Bluest Spears. Uh, Jeffrey Epstein. <laughs> uh, mm, that probably won't get on. Um, yeah, I just Bend just. Over. Uh huh. <laughs> Bend over. <laughs> <laughs> that would be that would be so funny if if like a good even if a good two percent of the names were just vaguely reminiscent of this show. <laughs> Keelan's Meelans. <laughs>
That's that's really good. You know what? Just sign up and make a reference to the show. Lots of spears, lots of Lewis stuff, and uh, and DM your screenshot to the Spearhead Sundays Instagram page. We'll post the best ones. Or to me. As or well. to Keelan, yeah, because he'll actually see them. Um, <laughs> <clears throat> that's really good. You know what would be fucking awesome in in, uh, in 2028 is if, if we... Because you know how they have a fan club? Like every game has like behind the goalpost, they've got the fan club. Yeah. That'd be awesome if we could just fucking... Because how shitty would they be if most of the fan club was there, ironically, and it was kind of more of a podcast meetup? Like hopefully in 2028, the show is really big. Yeah. Like if we were getting... If we're getting like, a, I don't know, 100,000 downloads, we could really ruin the atmosphere of the Tasmanian Devils supporters section. That could be good fun, yeah. That would be so good. Like, it, like, because uh, most football games, they have chants, right? They've got chants they do, they wear face paint. What if we just all did impressions of the Warner Brothers Tasmanian Devil? <laughs> you know, and like, uh, they, the ta- like uh, it's their first game, we're in the fourth quarter, the Tasmanian Devils sc- score their first point. It's not a goal, it hit the post, it's a point. You know, it, it, we're going 200 to 1 at this point, and it cuts to the supporters, and we're all going... <laughs> people are spinning in circles, falling over. <laughs> that would be really good. <laughs> so, guys, put that in your calendar for 2028. We're all going to go to the first Tasmanian Devils uh, game in, in, I assume, Hobart. It's going to be cold as fuck, and we're going to lose with style. Book your babysitters now. Yeah, book your babysitters. Um, even those, even those of you who don't have kids, you might have a three-year-old by then. Um, where's Kate Middleton? Oh, where's Kate Middleton? Everyone's wondering where is Kate Middleton? Where is Kate Middleton? Who gives a fuck? Who cares? Does anyone should should anyone give a fuck at all about Kate Middleton? She's not even the fucking. She's not even the queen. I don't care. Why do I have to care about royals? She, she's a fucking... The royal family is a borderline tourist attraction. Everyone, why do they even exist at all? Do they do anything? It sucks. All right? It's a fucking tourist attraction. And apparently the only thing that can make uh, the people care less about this tourist attraction is just like dream world when we find out that they've heard a bunch of children like why are we who cares where kate oh she's not making public appearances what was she doing in public anyway showing up you know in a fucking stupid hat and going don't talk to me commoners why do we why does anyone give a fuck where she is oh she posted a photoshopped image okay I don't think Kim Kardashian looks like that when she posts her photos. Everyone's freaking out. Everyone's freaking out that Kate Middleton edited her photos like they're not jumping on Facetune before they post a fucking Instagram story. Like I don't, I don't give a, I don't give a fuck where this woman and her children are. Who cares? How how is anyone's life changed? You know what this Kate Middleton thing, like, really says to me is um. I think that the only people that actually care about where Kate Middleton is, is the media because I think a huge chunk of their business actually relies on buying and selling photos of her. So they're trying to get the public to care about her because now that she's gone, they can't fucking try and take photos up her skirt as she gets out of a car and sell that to TMZ. I don't care where Kate Middleton is. Has anyone checked the tunnels? Not the Jewish tunnels in New York. I'm talking about the ones under the... Like actual car tunnels. Is it... Look, I'm just saying the last thing that a fucking woman who is almost the queen needs is paparazzi looking for her as she tries to get away from them. That ended poorly last time. Leave her alone. Everyone who also, the, uh, the whole tourist attraction thing shits me of like, people go, oh, 
the royal family is useless. And the only cohesive argument that makes some sense and holds water is they bring in a lot of money for the UK for tourism. My rebuttal to that is, isn't it mostly the castles? Like, isn't, isn't most of the work done by the actual fucking old buildings and the castles that they live in? Like, no tourist actually gets to see the royal family, you know? Like, how much extra money are they bringing in because inside of that castle, there might be a guy dying of ass cancer. Like, is, is any extra revenue being generated? You know? Like, would, would Uluru make more money if you told people that Inside the Rock was an, was an Aboriginal elder? I don't think so. I don't think it would make more money. That's a terrible analogy, by the way. <laughs> because... All there is like a natural landmark. But you know what I mean? Like in Scotland, there's a bunch of castles that are not full of royalty that used to be full of kings and queens. Like, would any less money be made if all of the royals were just like guys and girls? They're not royals anymore and you could just like... People don't want to see the queen. They want to see Buckingham Palace. And look at the guards. Like, you can still have the guards. You can still have the palace. You can still have the fucking walkthrough tours. And, like, I'm not going... Like, if I go to if I go to England, I will want to see those things. But not because of the people in them. Because of the history associated with them. And I want to see, like, the old buildings and... Because kings and queens were only interesting when they were fucking killing each other. And fighting off Vikings. And trying to fuck their cousin without their children becoming retarded. You know? That's what I'm interested in. When I was at Buckingham Palace the other year, there was a rumor going around on TikTok that the Queen had died. Yeah. And so Phoebe and I are standing out the How front. How close to her death was this? Really close. Yeah. So Phoebe and I are standing out in front of the crowds, just going loudly going, Oh my God, news alert, the Queen has died. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And That's then, good. When... I landed home, I got into bed, and then you texted me, oh, my God, the Queen just died. Was yeah, because I actually did know, Yeah, like, the day before they announced it because so, I knew I knew a chef that used to work in the palace but still knew the chefs that worked in the palace, and they all found out early. So I found out that she died the day I got back from England. Wow. So you kind of spoke it into existence. Yeah. You you won't be allowed back. No. But yeah, I don't know. Why why should anyone give a fuck about Kate Middleton not showing her face in public? Like, like is that is that her job? Yeah. But does, who she, pays her to do that? The royal family pay her to do royal engagements. That's her whole job. And to <laughs> to be the face of the Williams family. Right. Well, I would say that William is doing a terrible job at representing the royal family uh, because can he can can Prince William shave the rest of his fucking head? Please. Can you believe that Prince William used to be the hot one? Do you remember this? You might not remember this unless you're like, you know, 25 plus, but Prince William used to be the sexy one and then he started to lose his hair and he got a bit fat in the face, probably drinking too much. And now the dude's just walking around with the sideburns on his head. I would like to make it very clear to any men out there who are losing their hair. Not me, all right? I'll never lose my hair. Sucked in. My grandpa's still got his and so does my grandmother. <laughs> I'm not going bald anytime soon. So does my dad. So does all the men on my mum's side. It's not my genes, dude. Sorry. I am going grey early, but I'm a silver fox. Fuck, you know, you know who else had grey hair? Jeffrey Epstein. <sighs> I need the beard back. Anyway, I I would like to put forth something that a lot of fellas need to hear. This is really important to anyone who's losing their hair. I think that you actually look more bald with 
just the hair around the side than you do if you were actually completely bald. Like once you once you get that reverse U at the top of your head, it's time to shave all of it. Just give up. Like Prince William at this point has the same haircut as Homer Simpson. And it's not befitting of a royal. Shave it. All right, anyway, what else is happening? Oh, man, have you been watching this Nickelodeon stuff? No. This, this Nickelodeon shit is crazy. You know, so a documentary came out all about uh, Nickelodeon in like the 2000s when it was kind of headed by Dan Schneider. Um, Dan Fingers Insider Schneider. And this is this I, this whole thing coming out now, like in in twenty twenty four, like this just shows to me. Obviously, everything that's happened is horrible, and I, I believe all of it, and it's fucking horrific. But what what this really says to me is how fucking pervasive and powerful uh, the effect on the culture and the internet that four chan is. Because I remember when when I was when I was like 17, 16 to 18, when I used to go on 4chan all the time, right? This is like before social media was a really big thing, when Facebook was just starting, when the when the internet was just a collection of message boards and websites, and then YouTube was just taking off. I used to go to 4chan all the time. And all the time I would see threads and threads and threads all about Dan Schneider and the, the really suspect TV scenes that were on Nickelodeon. And this was before there was like any evidence beyond what we saw on television. This was just like some autistic 4chan getting screenshots and downloading videos of all of these really weird like mildly sexual scenes that these child girl actors were doing and then doing the research and figuring out that all of these questionably kind of erotic, just weird scenes were all only happening on shows that Dan Schneider was like the executive producer on. And I remember looking at this and I had come to this conclusion, yeah, back in like fucking 2011, 2012, when I was 17 going, fuck, Something really weird is going on in Nickelodeon and these shows are definitely strange and the positions they're putting these girls in and the things they're making them do. Like, yeah, in 20, 2017, I remember watching, like, the footage and I'm a minor when I'm watching this going, oh, this is fucking weird as of, like, Ariana Grande sucking her own toes and there's there's other scenes of her, like, jokingly, like, trying to squeeze juice out of a potato and she's holding it with both of her hands and like going like this and making these weird moans and then there's other scenes of her like on the bed on her back with the camera behind her like pouring water all over herself and all over her body and her face and going ah and and then so many other scenes of like like it looked like a Quentin Tarantino film like barefoot to the camera and all that kind of stuff and like rubbing goo and sauce on feed and so many other really, really fucking strange scenes. And at the time, the the logo of Nickelodeon was a foot. Right? So like, and Dan Schneider was the guy. Like he was the man at Nickelodeon. Every show he produced was a fucking hit. Every show made heaps of money. They pretty much gave him free reign to create whatever he wanted and to uh, uh, run the shows however he wanted. And like now we know that even he has re- has uh, admitted that the the environments was, were toxic. He's completely denied all of the um, sexual implications and, and uh, his defense is that adults are looking at these scenes with a sexual view, whereas... He wasn't and no one on the show was either and that there were always parents on set and stuff like that. But then other child stars who have been like definitely uh, proven in court sexually abused are going, 
there weren't always parents there because if there were, how did this happen to me? Um, but so even Dan Schneider's gone like, yeah, I I was an asshole to a lot of people, a lot of adults, but I was I never did anything sexually to the kids. Um, but you got to take that with a grain of salt because the guy has a, a, a in his own house has a has a pool that's uh, shaped like a foot. <laughs> so I don't know. You're trying to send you're sending mixed messages there, Dan. But yeah, I, I think that's that's like so obviously horrible what's happened. But it's so it's so fascinating how fucking powerful and pervasive the effect of 4chan is on internet culture as a whole and therefore the real fucking world um, where something that was regularly discussed and then kind of like it was discussed it was theorized it was researched and then like case closed yeah we think there's something fucked going on like 4chan had moved on from this in by like 2013 but then all of that research that they did and by the way this is before Anyone spoke out publicly. This is before any of the actors said anything. Any of the behind the scenes people said anything. Any journalists came sniffing. This was just what 4chan saw on TV and then doing the math and being like, why does this thing keep happening with these child actors? Why is it always feet? Why is it always like goo and condiments and wet things being poured all over them? Why are they always in these positions? There's something weird going on here. All of that was like case closed, moved on from in like 2013, 14. And now like the biggest fucking documentary of the, of the moment is a four part limited series on the abusive environment at Nickelodeon. Um, and all of these like former staff members and child actors talking about the, uh, not just the abusive work environment that they've endured, but also a lot of them are talking about actual sexual abuse that happened to them as well. This is proven in court, court guilty verdicts and all that kind of stuff. It's called Quiet On Set. Quiet On Set. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's just, it's just fucking crazy. Like, it's like the, the Me Too movement for the, the child actors um, industry, which is so foul. But, you know, it's like we all know that Hollywood uh, is like that and has been much worse since its inception you know you look at marilyn monroe like the how she died like uh, how she was kind of abused and passed around from executive to, to executive you look at harvey weinstein you know what's the the craziest thing about harvey weinstein my point was you know of course if all of this stuff was happening in the adults industry and these people acting with such impunity and power with like no fear of being caught it makes sense that it would also be happening in the, the children's uh, section of, of that, of the industry, which is just foul. And that's coming from me, a guy who looks like Jeffrey Epstein. <laughs> Fuck. Um, you know what's crazy about the, the Weinstein thing? Is um, in court, everyone describing his mangled looking penis. Mm. Do you know that? He had like a really fucked, deformed looking penis. Is I, if I was Harvey Weinstein, and the prosecution lawyer, like I'm on the stand, right? And and up to this point, I've denied, I've denied, I've denied. Even if it looked like I was going to win this case, if the prosecution like stepped up to the to me and and went, Mr. Weinstein, could you please describe your penis? I would stand up and go, I did it. I did it. Yeah. Please don't. Because I would know that five or six women are going to come in and describe my mangled looking cock. I'd be like, yeah, I did it. All, all done. Please, just for the love of God, don't get someone to draw it. <laughs> <laughs> That's unfortunate, isn't it? Being See, you don't want to be able... Oh, I, w I was just going to say you don't really want to be identified by your penis, but that could be really good. But probably really bad. Yeah. More likely to be if you can if you can identify a, a if someone could look at your dick like just from belly bat belly button down knees up, if someone can identify your dick, it looks fucked. There's something wrong with it. It's not good. Do you think if you saw mm -hmm. a thousand pictures of penises, yeah. front on flaccid, yeah, would you be able to pick out yours? Mine. That's a good question. 
I, well, I want to say, I want to say yes, but if they were all like framed exactly the same, I reckon no. Yeah. I don't think so. Don't think if they were all framed the same and if they, if they all had no pubes as well, so you can't even get the hair color. Yeah. If everyone's, if everyone's waxed and it's the same temperature <laughs> as well, yeah. You know what? I feel like if you get if every dick had two photos, cold and hot, I could identify mine. Really? Oh, uh, yeah, I could identify mine if in a Cuz I feel like everyone knows to the extent that they're a grower. You know, everyone knows their margin. You know? Cuz some dudes are just no matter the temperature, they're the, exactly the same. Yeah. Some dudes are like fucking um Ant-Man. <laughs> I reckon <laughs> uh, that really got me but yeah i reckon a, a thousand a thousand same temperature same pubic hair trimming same angle i think i could get 10 that would be like it's one of these you know i i think cold i could work it out mm. but otherwise I, well, i'd have no idea Maybe a scar on my on my shaft. Guys, um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna get um, submissions where you need a thousand no, penis. Don't, don't. <laughs> <laughs> don't for the love of God, don't. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's just like uh, it's obviously horrible to see because it looks like it's essentially all of it's true. But it's also like. It's like uh, I'm just seeing. I've I know all of this stuff. Like it's it's crazy seeing the entire world like be shocked by this and be freaking out about this, and then pulling up all of the old clips that I had seen again and again and again in like 2007, 2011 when I was 17. I, I like I feel like I've like I feel like I've already watched this entire documentary and all of the research be done by like just autistic racist neckbeards on 4chan. Like I feel like I've like I've already done this. I feel like a, a like a conspiracy theorist that finally got confirmation. Like I fucking knew the moon landing was fake. I knew it. Um, but yeah, Dan Schneider's come out and he said he's basically confirmed the toxic work environment and denied all of the uh, the because he's not. A, I don't think he's accused of any sexual abuse, but he is accused of like creating very sexual scenes and his defense is oh people are just looking at that through a sexualized lens which i just don't think holds water at all because because like if you're working with children if you're filming children you're getting them to do stuff like i mean i've never worked with kids but i feel like i would i'd be able to look at something and think even if I know from the bottom of my heart that I didn't intend this to be sexual. I know by looking at this, someone will. Which to a certain extent is inevitable. Like if you look at all of the child influencers, like just posting photos of their kids doing anything, there's always creeps that are going to find it. But I feel like, I don't know, like filming someone, a, a girl barefoot going like this with her toes and rubbing shit on it and sucking her own feet. Like that's, there's no way that you can look at that and go, oh, this is fine to put out there. Jeanette McCurdy spoke about it in her book where... Because you've read her book. Yeah. Right. And what did she say? One of, The one that I can remember is that they needed her to dress in a bikini or, or a body, you know, what? a yeah. bather, bather, bather suit. Yeah. And she was uncomfortable with it and she was trying to tell the costume department that she didn't want to. Mm. And the costume department were like, yeah, yeah, we hear you, but um, you have to. The director said you have to. The director being Dan Schneider. Mm. Um, and she fought hard for it, but everyone was too scared of him to do anything about it. Yeah, and see, that's that's weird. Like, I can't think of... Like, there's so many alternatives to, like, a bathing suit for... Even if you have to do, like, a, a pool scene. You could do, like, a full one-piece. You could do a rashy. Yeah. You know, like a long-sleeve rashy or a short-sleeve rashy. Like, there's no reason why you need an underage girl in a fucking bikini that's strange like if she's if she's comfortable with it and her parents are comfortable with it whatever but if the the girl themselves is going oh i don't want to wear that it's like yeah. you got to listen because it's not essential you know if if it was like oh i don't want to do any 
fucking pool scenes at all, no matter what I'm wearing. It's okay. Well, maybe that's a little bit unreasonable because the show, the whole episode is at the beach or at a pool or whatever the fuck. It's like, that makes sense. But yeah, what people are wearing is like fucking crazy. Um, and yeah, I guess that speaks to the toxic environment because he would be a, he would be a cunt to the runner that would say, oh, she doesn't want this. And then, and then the runner would go and tell the wardrobe department, no, she has to wear this. And the wardrobe department might go up to Dan and go, she's not really uncomfortable. And he would be an asshole to the wardrobe department and the wardrobe department's like, fuck, I want to keep my job. I have to make this girl wear this. And none of those people other than Dan know the true motive as to why he, she has to be in a bikini. Does she have to be because he's such an artist and it won't, because that's the other thing. It's like, it's a fucking kids TV series. You know, there's no like, like, yeah, if you're, if you're, if you're Martin Scorsese and your artistic vision requires a certain item of clothing to be worn, then that's the job and you're an adult. So that's the job, but it's a fucking kids TV series. Like nothing in there is essential at all. You're creating silly TV. So it's just, I don't know. I just, I think it's very sus and I feel it's, it's fascinating watching like Twitter and social media and TV blow up over this thing that I feel like, yeah, at 17, some random anonymous 4chan had just uncovered it. And you see that all the time, like stuff that was super popular on 4chan like eight years ago, just coming into popular consciousness. Like every, just about every single slang term and word that's used on TikTok originated on fucking 4chan. I mean, you look at cryptocurrency and how, how much that's changed the world. That was all, I remember, yeah, like when I was 18 being like, oh, Bitcoin. I could buy 10,000 of those for a hundred bucks. I won't do that. That seems silly. Fuck. <laughs> the miscellaneous bit of the end uh, is the worst part of the podcast is the part where we answer emails and life advice questions sent in by you, the listener. If you want to uh, send an email to the show, send it to podcast at lewspears.com. That's podcast at L-E-W spears.com. Um, just summarize it in the subject line. Tell us a story. Ask us a question and we'll get back to you. Um, all right. Where are we? We've got, uh, I had this email, which looked quite good. Okay. So we've got this one titled, Are We the Assholes? And by the way, this uh, segment is sponsored by your support on Patreon. Hey, Lewis, big fan of the podcast and you in general. I've been watching since 2018, 2019. Thank you. That's a really long time. I appreciate that. Myself and my friend... Um, are far from 15, but she, she sure acted like it recently. We'll call my friend Karen. Okay, well, I feel like that's a bit of character assassination. You're setting me up to believe one thing. I'm going to change her name to Sarah. <laughs> Myself, my husband, because we wanted an honest opinion. If her name's Karen, she's a cunt, yes. you know? Myself, my husband, another couple, and Sarah went out of town for a three-day trip to celebrate Sarah and the wife from the other couple's birthdays. Okay, so it's Sarah's birthday here. Uh, on the last night away, we were supposed to go out and have a fancy dinner that Sarah had picked. We all failed to look at the menu until a couple of hours before our reservation. Sarah kept saying it was expensive and how the chef prepared things fresh daily. Well, when we looked at the menu, it was an immediate hell no for all of us. The food was ridiculously expensive and had very limited options. I'll include a picture. Okay. Uh, Sarah came downstairs and goes, I heard you guys talking. We don't have to go there. And then started to walk out of the room. And my husband goes, so you're just going to walk away and not talk about it? Sarah turned around and sat down but started crying. None of us knew how to respond to this reaction. She starts blabbering on about how she went with her parents and had the chicken and it was good. After she stopped crying, I tried bringing up other options for dinner and basically got shut down. She eventually perked up, but as soon as my husband tried bringing up why she didn't want to talk about why she cried, she aggressively flipped him off. I immediately looked at her crazy and asked why she flipped him off. She immediately apologized uh, only, because I said, only because I said something, I'm sure. We ended up going to dinner somewhere else and everything was fine. Sarah is an only child who was used to getting her way, clearly. We haven't spoken since this, which was about a week and a half ago at the time I'm sending this email. We plan on speaking with her about her behavior, but I'm not sure when. Hopefully my friend being a massive cunt will give you all a laugh. Ooh. 
Okay, I'm, I'm pulling up the menu here. She sent me a picture. I'm not... I feel like there was a reason why her name was changed to Karen. I'm not sold on her being the asshole here just yet. Yeah. But I've pulled up the menu. Because keep in mind, she did say that it was expensive. And you did agree to go to a fancy dinner for her birthday. And then you all pulled out when you saw the prices. So I think this is entirely dependent on the prices. Because if it's like... Yeah, I mean, fuck, if it's like $100 a meal, then that's a bit more than fancy. But let's see. I've pulled it up here. Um, and they complained about the lack of options. So we've got... Uh, there's a pasta menu. Uh, we've got octopus and pork filling, tomato sauce, tortellini, $25. Uh, Papa Deli, beef and pork ragu, $26. And then risotto, $35. That's the most expensive pasta. Uh, okay, that's not expensive. That's normal. Uh, let's check out the meats. Joyce Farm chicken, carrot carrot and chicken, half 29, whole chicken 55. Reasonable. Uh, hang on, is this American? I feel like it's... But even if it is American, it's not that expensive. Uh... Okay, whole roasted American red snapper, 51. Okay, so let's say this is American dollars. So that'd be about 70, 80 bucks. But that's for a whole fish. That's reasonable again. The pasta is a bit expensive because that would make it about 40 bucks. But again, that's not that's not crazy. For a birthday dinner, if, if she told you it was fancy, yeah. I'm if someone says, for my birthday... oh. Oh, battery level low. Sorry, the camera died. We're back. Um, I'm... I don't know, man. I'm not I'm not seeing the incredibly expensive food. I'm going to give you the benefit of the doubt and assume that this is American dollars. Um, but yeah, here's the thing. I need more information to decide who's the arsehole. Because she said, Sarah said... I heard you guys talking. We don't have to go there. What did you say? Like, what did she hear? Did she hear, oh, this looks really expensive. I don't know about this. Oh, I don't know if I can afford that. Or did she hear, is she fucking crazy? Does she think I'm going to spend this much money to go out to dinner? What the fuck? I don't want to do that. What a crazy fucking bitch. <laughs> you know, like, what did she hear when you guys were downstairs? I actually am going to say... I don't think she's the asshole. I think crying seems like a big reaction, but also she seemed very excited for her birthday. Seemed like it's something she really wanted to do. Seems like she did warn you that it would be fancy. What did she, what did she say? Our last night away, we were supposed to go out and have a fancy dinner that Sarah had picked. Sarah kept saying it was expensive and how the chef prepared things fresh daily. And then the only other thing on the menu is like chef's choice, price per person, food $68 per person, wine 48. I mean that's Yeah, like 100 bucks Australian. If that's if it's 68 Australian, you guys are the asshole. If it's $100, it's, it's that's not that expensive for like a fancy dinner. That's fairly That's what a nice birthday dinner costs if you're having a multi-course meal. 100 bucks. For sure. Like most, I mean, in my area, uh, most like regular restaurants, you're looking at fucking $25 to $35 a meal at like a normal place that's not fast food. You know, so like a fancier place, I'm thinking $40 to $60 depending on what I get for sure. Like minimum $35 for if it's a nice place. Yeah. Um yeah, I mean, it seems it seems like the way that you've worded it, she had a crazy overreaction, but I also get the sense that you're leaving out a lot of what you guys said and how your husband spoke to her. Because uh, after she stopped crying, blah, 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 um, your husband, uh, yeah, I don't know. Seems to be a lot of information. I'm leaning towards that maybe you actually could be the asshole it depends on what was said when she was listening. And also after she cried, did you go, hey, I want to talk about why that happened. Like, did we offend you? Is there anything that I can do? Or did you go, 
Why the fuck did you cry? Oh, we just didn't want to go to an expensive dinner. You're being a baby. There's a seems to be a lot of context missing. I would like a follow up in email to get to the bottom of this. Kellen, what do you think? I think the same. It doesn't seem that expensive. Yeah. Yeah. They probably just said something to hurt her feelings. Yeah. All right. Case almost half half open. It's closing. Case closing. Send send a follow up. And if you if you have some, if you need some live advice, if you have a funny story, if you uh, want to know anything uh, or want me to bring something to the show, send it through to podcast at loosespears.com. Uh, we're getting a bunch of emails now, which is really good. Uh, keep them coming. And uh, yeah, that'll be it. We're going to continue on uh, over on Patreon right now. There's a Patreon episode up. And uh, yeah, we'll talk to you over there. Until then, I hope you have a shit one. Bye.